Well, <clears throat> good morning, fam. Welcome to Faith and Fandom Feedback Friday for, uh, golly, it's hard to say the word November, November 8th, 2024, as coming off the emotionally draining and slightly conflicting election week, just every election week is a conf draining and conflicting, but I know this one has especially been, I don't know if it's even especially y'all, it's just anytime we as a people are shown how divided we are, it's probably draining, but I'm probably not going to spend next to any time talking about that because we have enough going on with that. You don't need me to talk about it. We'll see how it goes, though. But good morning. I'm grateful to be able to be here with you this morning to talk about some news, to uh, share some thoughts, maybe some hopes, probably also address some anxieties. But, you know, for the most part, just grateful to be able to be here today to share with you. Good evening, Tristan. Um, yeah, I'm just grateful to be here with y'all, and I appreciate you. Let's jump right in it, because, uh, got things to do today. Not surprising. Gotta record the pull list podcast right after this, and some adulting, and there's a prom tonight, and all the things. I'm going to a Renaissance Festival tomorrow. Pew, pew, that's gonna be fun. My first big one. Um... I'm going to wear my Senshi cosplay for that. But yeah, let's jump into some news. Pull up my notes. Uh, my region was famously in the news over the past year um, for the tragic death of uh, Micah Miller, um, who was the ex-wife of a pastor. Um, I guess she was his current wife at the time. Um, but who took her life under mysterious circumstances um, here in my town from Myrtle Beach. Um, and her husband, her former husband, John Paul Miller, who was a pastor who, while in his pulpit, was very open and public um, about some of the struggles with his wife. And I don't know. I know that as a pastor, a lot of times our stories for our personal life get like translated into sermons and messages. And sometimes you hear just way too much about our own personal lives from a stage. Um, I've done it plenty of times. My kids know as soon as something happens in their life, they're probably going to hear about it on the stage. But uh, the Miller story was one that was got a lot of press. Well, anyway, two updates for that. One, the FBI raided John Paul Miller's home in the last two weeks. I'm not sure if I mentioned that last week or not. That happened last week. But the FBI raided John Paul Miller's home. Um, And secondly... John Paul Miller has been arrested, but not for this. He was arrested because there was a protester uh, that was being aggressive with him, air quotes, and he used his phone and, like, tapped the lady's hat, and uh, she charged him with assault. From my understanding of reading the news story, um, he tapped this lady's hat and she got him charged with assault for that so <laughs> he's in jail or at least was for that so which you know that could be a foothold in the door for further things happening but and i'm not advocating for this dude's jail time um i'm just saying like there was a lot of suspicious stuff with it and a lot of questionable choices in terms of what he's shared publicly and how he shared it and the choices he made. Again, not that any of us aren't flawed, but this has been a real public uh, eye-catching situation. 
Um, so, uh, Sports Week Media or Sports Skedia Wrestling, which is a website, um, used the phrase that, to my knowledge, I coined and have a uh, passive copyright for. I'm not mad about it. I'm just happy, you know. I thought of something uh, earlier in the year. I wrote a devotional on Jay Uso called The Yeet Shall Inherit the Earth. And uh, talking about Jay's uh, domination of pop culture with his little Yeet Cat trays. And Sportskedia used The Yeet Shall Inherit the Earth to break their story that Jay Uso over the month of October, sold more merch than CM Punk or Roman Reigns combined, um, li- which is literally the topic of my devotional. Um, so, you know, a modicum of a trendsetter there, because that totally was functional and happened. So that's pretty cool. Uh, at the 2024 Luca Comics and Games Festival in Italy, which is a big Comic Con and Nerd Festival in Italy. <clears throat> uh, there was a giant Gear Five Luffy uh, balloon, and directly next to the giant Gear Five Luffy balloon was Luce, the anime mascot of the Catholic Church. And it's officially the Vatican's first time doing an official Comic-Con presence. Just throwing that out there. (laughs) The Vatican uh, came out and did their first official Comic-Con presence and had an inflatable balloon next to Gear 5 Luffy. As someone who's put the better part, as someone, oops, that was me. Turn that notification down. That was me. Like, obviously it wasn't, there's somebody else at my desk. Um, As someone who has put a girthy amount of their life. Good morning, Christopher. As someone who has put a girthy amount of their life into geek ministry, there's something kind of beautifully refreshing about seeing an animated Christian mascot next to Gear 5 Luffy at the biggest Comic-Con in Italy. So, I'm just taking a moment to raise a glass that we're at this place in life. Um, <clears throat> Ted Lasso is now available on physical media. Uh, Apple TV has been notorious for not releasing any of their content in physical media meaning you have to maintain like a apple plus tv subscription to be able to watch any of their content this past weekend i was doing a wedding and lo and behold one of my friends wrote pointed me out to the fact that ted lasso is now available in did in dvd and blu-ray and it all comes in one box uh called the richmond way so if you are a Ted Lasso fan and you want to have some physical content and be able to hold on to this without maintaining a uh, subscription to Apple TV, you can get it. It's on Amazon. I literally ordered it on Amazon and it was in my house in less than 20 hours. So, and just to point out by my last count of Apple subscriptions solo, uh, the whole series will run you less than a year of Apple TV. So there's that note, but I'm excited to break into that. I've got a, I'm finishing a show right now just to kind of be my comfort show at the moment. And then I'll probably jump back onto that. Uh, Eminem returned to Fortnite (laughs) with, um, a new outfit, gear, and uh, a mini gun that spits out bullets made of lyrics. 
Um, it also came the pack that for Fortnite also came with a uh, Snoop Dogg, Ice Spice, and the late uh, deceased Juice World. Uh, it was a sequel to last uh, e- last year's Fortnite OG this month. Um, in comic book news, which we'll probably cover this in the pull list as well. Um, in comic book news, Eddie Brock is now the host for Carnage, uh, changing the Venom storyline indefinitely for possibly ever. So Eddie Brock is now the host of Carnage, and if you're a Marvel comics book comic reader, you're gonna be finding much more about that anyway. A uh, the Pokemon trading card game Pocket uh, has received a lot of good love and re- good reviews, and people. Um, um, Tristan said you saw the t- the the last of DVDs over the weekend. And thought of me. Thanks for thinking of me. <laughs> but yes, um, I would have squealed and done like a high kick if I'd seen those in person. Um, but the Pokemon trading card game, the pocket version, made twelve million dollars in four days. Now again, these are free games, but you can just choose to pay more, and uh. But Pocket made twelve million in four days, and I'm going to make sure I try and balance my commentary here because this is there is some humor to this, but it is also real. So let me uh be um moderately cautious in how I say this. Um, if you are aware, um, and I think I've covered it the last couple of weeks too. Um, North Korea has partnered with Russia to send North Korean soldiers into the battle for Russia slash the Ukraine, all of that. And so a literal army of North Korean soldiers has been sent to Russia. The North Korean army that has been sent to Russia is almost been rendered completely null and void because this is the first time in their lives the North Korean soldiers have had unfiltered internet. And because the North Korean soldiers now have unfiltered internet... I lost the sticker. Because the North Korean soldiers now have unfiltered internet, uh, they have become violently addicted to adult entertainment. And I will say that politely for little ears that might be around. But the soldiers have become so addicted to adult entertainment that it's bordering on insurrection, mutiny, a wall, whatever, they're not being able to follow orders or actually function because of how aggressive this has become. Because you've got people from the strictest portion of the world all of a sudden getting a smidgen of freedom and they're losing their minds with it. Now, I find some humor in that. That could be the downfall of an army. But at the same time, I know the effect that has on real life people everywhere all the time, young people that are being exposed to these things. I know what it was like for me as a 12 year old or eight year old even to be as exposed to adult content as a child, much not through the Internet, but like books and VHS that my father would have lying around. Um I know how damaging it can be. Um, But it's kind of crazy that that could be the thing that could turn the tide into battle. Um, But it also reminds me of that uh, verse of scripture that says that we're not supposed to use our freedom for our own fleshly desires because the minute these dudes got exposed to freedom, uh, they used it for sin. And it's kind of just wild. Um, 
Good morning, Daniel. I hope you're doing, man. I've been praying for you. I know it's been a health struggle for you lately. Uh, the election did take place this past week, and you know I'm not going to spend a ton of time doing commentary on that. But uh, in pseudo local news, um, a South Carolina election site polling site turned into a violent scene as a man was asked to remove a hat. Now I'll just leave out what the hat said, but there is a law slash rule in South Carolina that you can't wear political gear to vote. Um, I didn't know that was a thing. Um, and Daniel, you're still doing good. Um, but you're like 70% on the mend. Well, Hey dude, I'm glad 70 is there. I know it's still a long way from hundred. Um, but the man was asked to remove the, the hat and it did not, his response was not good. And there is video of him physically attacking four to five women who are trying to calm down the situation. That's not great. Um, yep. Uh, in news that people are sure to be um, upset about, and you'll hear some uh, protesty things and grumpy things about it, especially because he's the voice of so many other childish things. But also, you shouldn't be surprised if you actually know his catalog. Uh, Jack Black is now going to be playing um, a hybrid of Satan and Santa in the upcoming Paramount picture, Dear Santa. Um, uh, where a kid, I think the premise revolves around dyslexia or just bad spelling, but a dude, a kid is writing a letter to Santa and misspells it and writes Satan. And so Jack Black as Satan shows up in Christmas gear and shenanigans ensue. Uh, it is going to be, to my understanding, a straight to streaming movie for Paramount. Um, yeah. Uh, Daniel said, yeah, I have you have to be 50 from the holy place for any campaigning, including clothing resembling a party. Oh, yeah. I knew the 50 foot thing because I DJed all day. Um on Tuesday um, at a polling site, and I had to set up the 50 feet. It was a whole thing. Um, Star Wars is now uh, officially announced a new trilogy that they're working on um, that would be uh, spearheaded by um, the... Hey, John, good to see you, buddy. Um, I don't know. I've been at it for about... 15, 20 minutes, not a ton, but you'll catch up. Uh, but new trilogy has been announced. Um, and why it is a concern is that it's from Simon Kinberg, who has done some pretty notably good things in terms of nerd and media and content. But this is also the dude who wrote um, like the 2015 Fantastic Four and uh x-men apocalypse or maybe it was uh dark phoenix either way um there, there's i think a solo ray movie coming john but i think this is a completely separate sequel uh that will focus on all new characters while old characters may appear in just part of the world building it's going to be a brand new separate trilogy air quotes um if you didn't have uh, sci-fi gone wrong as part of your 2024 uh, bingo card, are you even playing the game? Because um, the movie 12 Monkeys is happening, but on a bigger scale. Uh, at the South Carolina facility Alpha Genesis, uh, which breeds monkeys for bio-research, 40 monkeys have escaped the research facility and there is a public warning from the police that all the residents need to secure their doors and windows. Welcome to Raccoon City. This is how things go. Uh, there was a death this week. 
in pop culture of a dude whose name you've probably no, never known before, but a voice you've almost all, almost certainly heard. Elwood Edwards uh, from New Bern, North Carolina, died this week at 74 years old. And here's why you know Elwood Edwards. You've got mail. He's that guy. The original voice for AOL's You've Got Mail. That guy. He passed away this week. Um, dude is literally part of the soundtrack of the internet. And uh, he passed away. Uh, Fallout 2, or Fallout Season 2, is scripting to begin to shoot in just a couple months. And joining the cast of Fallout Season 2 is none other than Macaulay Culkin. Uh, his little brother... Uh, what's his little brother's actual name? I wanted to call him uh, Romulus from Secession, but either way, his little brother's been killing the acting scene lately, but Macaulay is joining the cast of Fallout Season 2. Uh, Nintendo made two announcements this week. One... The, the When the Nintendo Switch 2 drops, it will be backwards compatible for all Switch games, which is a nice thing to know. The second is that the Legend of Zelda live-action movie will happen this decade. I don't know that that's an incredibly encouraging announcement, but it's not the worst announcement. Um, Arcane Season 2 drops uh, this weekend. And uh, with its final season, it also has a fantastic soundtrack uh, dropping this weekend, uh, which features Stray Kids, 21 Pilots with a new song. Um, but uh, it's official that as the show is dropping, that Arcane is the most expensive animated series ever made. Um, with only two seasons, it's the most expensive animated series ever made. Uh, Amazon MGM Studios is also uh, finally putting their nose to the grindstone and starting work on a show they announced in 2021. Um, Daniel Casey is officially uh, writing and producing a Mass Effect TV series for Amazon. Now, if they're being hesitant about doing Warhammer, I can't imagine... Mass Effect being any cheaper, but if you don't know this dude's name, the reason that you would probably know this dude's name is that he made Fast and Furious 9. So they're trusting the dude who made a Fast and the Furious movie with the future of Warhammer. Not Warhammer, uh, Mass Effect. So, it is what it is. Uh, Death Stranding, the Norman Reedus uh, uh, Kojima video game, uh, is finally being released on Xbox. It's finally out on Xbox Series X and S. The PlayStation exclusive uh, game is now available for uh, PC and on um, Xbox. So that's pretty cool. Uh, Queen Elizabeth and Prince Philip um, found... A 77-year-old slice of their wedding cake in a room um, uh, in a room where they had, I guess, used for a honeymoonish portion of their royal marriage. Um, and they found a slice of wedding cake that was 77 years old and they actually sold it at an auction and it was totally purchased. Um, a man in Oregon uh, was riding his bicycle when he was hit by an ambulance. The ambulance that hit him then picked him up and took him to the hospital. Now he is suing the ambulance for charging him $1,800 for taking him to the hospital. So that's, that's life. Um, a man uh, breaks a world record by running the New York city marathon all in Crocs. 
Um, he says he didn't lose any toenails or cause any major damage, but he did it. Um, in uh, spiritual movie news, Chris Pratt is joining a cast called uh, Fighting Spirit um, as an executive producer. Um, it's a movie uh, to talk about military chaplains in combat. Um, the title is Fighting Spirit, A Combat Chaplain's Journey. Um, he's going to be the executive producer um, for this. Um, so I'm sure that's going to be someone's bag of entertainment. Um, the best Christmas pageant ever this week drops with Dallas Jenkins, uh, the dude from The Chosen. It's in theaters. It also stars the lady from... Uh, Gilmore Girls. Uh, Lauren Daigle is producing a new song and uh, the anthem for the Dietrich Bonhoeffer biography movie that's coming out this month. I want to say it's this month um, called Bonhoeffer Pastor Spy Assassin. And she is writing the new song that will be the end title track and will be the theme song for the Bonhoeffer movie. Now, if you aren't familiar with Dietrich Bonhoeffer, he is one of the best theologians out there, but he was also a uh, a spy, an assassin, and a pastor. Um, and in fact, uh, you know, the Tom Cruise movie where he tries to get a briefcase to uh, explode to assassinate Hitler, that was part of his story. Um, Margot Robbie has given birth to a baby boy. Uh, music producer Quincy Jones has died at age of 91. And if you weren't familiar, uh, Ann Perkins from Parks and Recreation is the daughter of Quincy Jones. Um, there has been huge flooding in Barcelona as uh, tremendous amounts of water have rampaged uh, Spain. Uh, there's that. Uh, this Saturday you'll be able to get a free crispy chicken sandwich on Saturday from Burger King because this Saturday is National Fried Chicken Sandwich Day, which, you know, all of you needed to know. Uh, Saudi Arabia is uh, woke up this morning in Al the Al Jaff Desert, woke up to snow for the first time ever based on any history that they have. Um, in a short burst, they had uh, snow uh, as well as um, heavy rain and hailstorms in the middle of the Al Jaff Desert. That's just kind of crazy. So, yeah. I'm going to do a Bible reading real quick. Um, because... Chris just told me he needs to get going recording our other podcast and um, see where we're at real quick. If I can get this out on time. Thanks. Two. I hope y'all are doing okay in real talk in terms of the election. I know that there's lots of discouragement out there, and I just genuinely hope and pray that you aren't overwhelmed beyond this, because being where I am in life, I have a lot of people on both sides of every situation, and it's just kind of heartbreaking to watch people be people. And so please do your best to give people courage. Here we go. Rolling. I wait. 13, 1, 18, and 5. Thirteen plus one plus eighteen is five. Digging that bluey night crawler, yeah, dude. Um, I got that from Brian Wingrove, who's a artist. Um, I want to say at the Vertical First Comic Con. Um, minus four, thirty-three, and the thirty-third book. Of the Bible. 
because I'm starting to save time and not count, is Micah. So we are going to be in the book of Micah real quick. And Micah is um, page 1185. Micah has four, six, seven, Micah has seven chapters, so I'm going to roll a D8 and try not to get a an eight. It's this guy right here. I got an eight. Great. Six. All right, Micah chapter six. I'm going to do my notebook later because I knew Chris is waiting. Um. Micah chapter 6 with our role for initiative Bible reading. Listen to what the Lord says. Stand up, plead my case before the mountains. Let the hills hear what you have to say. I know I'm in time, but I also need a highlighter. Stand up, plead my case before the mountains. Let the hills hear what you have to say. Hear you mountains, the Lord's accusations. Listen, you everlasting foundations of the earth. The Lord has a case against the people. He is lodging a charge against Israel. My people, what have I done to you? How have I burdened you? Answer me. Mm, that doesn't end well. Uh, I, bought, I brought you up out of Egypt and redeemed you from the land of slavery. I sent Moses to lead you and Aaron and Miriam. My people remember what Balak, king of Mo Moab, plotted, and what Balaam, son of Baor, answered. Remember your journey from Shittim to Gilgal, that you may know the righteous acts of the Lord. With what shall I come before the Lord and bow down before the exalted God? Shall I come before him with burnt offerings, with calves two years old? Will the Lord be pleased with a thousand rams, with ten thousand rivers of oil and silver, or of olive oil? Shall I offer my firstborn for my transgressions, the fruit of my body, for the sin of my soul? Oh my gosh, what a phrase. The fruit of my body for the sin of my soul. Check, please. He has shown you, O mortal, what is good, and what does the Lord require of you? Oh, snap, we got this one. Uh, he has shown you, O mortal, what is good, and what does the Lord require of you? To act justly, to love mercy, and to walk humbly with your God. To act justly, to love mercy, and to walk humbly with your God. I love that verse, and there's a Stephen Curtis Chapman song from the 90s that slaps with that. Listen, the Lord is calling to the city, and to fear your name is wisdom. Heed the rod of the one who appointed it. Am I still to forget your ill-gotten treasures, you wicked house, and short effeth, which is accursed? Shall I acquit someone with dishonest scales, with a bag of false weights? You rich people are violent. Your inhabitants are liars. Your rich people are violent. Your inhabitants are liars. And their tongues speak deceitfully. I'm not saying anything. I'm making a highlight. Therefore, I have begun to destroy you, to ruin you because of your sins. Scribble, scribble, scribble. You will eat, but not be satisfied. Your stomach will be empty. Um, you will eat, but not be satisfied. Your stomach will be, still be empty. You will store up, but save nothing, because what you save, I will give to the sword. You will plant, but not harvest. You will press olives, but not use the oil. You will crush grapes, but not drink the wine. You have observed the statutes of Omri and all the practices of Ahab's house. You have followed their traditions. Therefore, I will give you over to ruin, and your people, derision, you will bear the scorn of nations." And God just swinging on Israel saying, you chose to live other ways and you're going to get the consequences of it. But all I've asked for you to do is to act justly, love mercy, and walk humbly with your God. Mm. That's going to be about my time. Uh, tried to get started a little sooner, but I didn't get too far this morning. But I want to take a moment to thank our Patreon supporters, uh, Lynn Turner. David Brooks, Jeff Weimer, 
uh, Colin Sproles, Jamie Montgomery, Matthew Col or, or the Coleman family, Jonathan Herman, uh, Ron Petit, Gear Saber Cosplay, Scott Ward, Alicia Glenn, Jay She, Jason Crutchfield, Mike Perner, Todd Turner, Turner, uh, John Jacobs, Zach Karras, Caleb Grimm, Jeanette Skaggs, Jason Bullock, Christina Ray, Sarah Lewis, Patrick Gale, Rebecca Godlove, and Adam Davis. Thank you so much for being the fantastic uh people that you are and uh that you uh just keep supporting the way that you have i'm going to say uh god bless y'all thank you for being here today and um i hope y'all have a great day and much love to you too john and thank you chris Y'all have a good day. And I'm going to hit the buttons and quit just awkwardly smiling. <laughs>